guys. Hope everybody's well. One of the questions that I seem to be getting quite a bit of lately is the question of, what do you do? Um, I know I've mentioned in several videos that I work from home, and I don't know if maybe that's prompted the question, or if a lot of people have asked me if I'm a teacher. And so while I was a little bit hesitant to answer that question at first, I guess I kind of figure also, people may just want to very well know, what gives you the kind of the credibility to be able to tell us about hair? So I wanted to share with you a little bit about myself. Essentially what I do is I'm a management consultant. I have an undergraduate degree in biology from Virginia Union and a master's degree in public health from Yale University. And with those, essentially when I left Yale, what I did was went right into corporate, what we call management consulting or advising. Essentially what I do is I advise clients, primarily large corporations, on how to run their businesses more effectively, more efficiently, more frugally, kind of at best in class standards. And while I've been doing that primarily subject matter expert in the area of healthcare, so helping corp companies, primarily Fortune 50, Fortune 100 companies, help them to manage their healthcare costs, figuring out who they're going to offer you as insurance, how much those insurers charge them to offer them that insurance, um, what sort of programs they'll go along with um, as part of their offerings, having on-site clinics, gyms, etc. So primarily it had been in healthcare, but in the last few years that I've branched out on my own, I've just gone into general just management consulting. So essentially from A to Z, nuts to bolts, I essentially help clients by taking an idea, I help them to visualize that idea, bring it to fruition on paper, and then help them to operationalize that idea, meaning I help them to map out and then walk through steps A, B, C, D, and E that will take an idea from the thought process into the actualization process. So essentially that's what I do. So that's the first time I answered that question kind of in that depth. It's going to be the last time, to be perfectly honest, I answer that question. Um, but I certainly understand kind of why people maybe have an interest. And I answered it also because I'm going to kind of use the same technique that I use in business as I explained today, Proteins 101. So let's get started. So let's say that you're a gal with very, very healthy hair. Hopefully that means you've probably been following Journey to My Roots and been picking up on some, hopefully some pretty good tips as well as lots of other great YouTubers and Facebookers out there. If you have healthy hair, let's, for the sake of argument, let's just pretend, and because proteins have the same effect on relaxed hair or natural hair, in this instance, I'm just using a girl with relaxed hair as the example. So for the sake of argument, let's pretend to just kind of make it easier to view that this is a strand of your hair. And because you know about your hair, you know about healthy hair, you know that one, the hair is just like your skin, porous, meaning there are pores to your hair, and you need to open those pores to get moisture in. And you can do that, you can learn more about that in Moisture 101 and whatnot, but essentially you can do that by adding water and warming, kind of using warmth, so whether it be warm water or whatnot. So you want to get lots of moisture into your hair and moisture comes from nothing more than water. So your hair has water in it and you know that you want to then wash your hair with um, a little bit of cool water to kind of close those pores up and then you want to seal in your water with an oil or a butter, such as a shea butter or some sort of oil. And then what proteins do is essentially sit on top of healthy hair. Remember we talked about the amino acids and how large proteins are, so each of these is an amino acid but all together this structure equals a protein. So they sit on top of your hair if that you have healthy hair. The pros to that are one, it makes hair shiny. 
and two, it tames the hair, meaning that you'll have less frizz. And while that may not be so much an issue if that you're relaxed, if you're natural, that's a great thing. The cons to proteins for healthy hair is that if you use too much of them, they weigh the hair down and they give you buildup. You may even notice if that you're using a protein product that you'll get kind of some like white substance or some just some flaky substance. That's because essentially your hair doesn't need the protein. Your hair is healthy, so you're using protein that's great, but you're probably using too much protein. Your hair is not absorbing it. It's sitting on top of the hair, but so much is sitting on top of the hair that essentially you're getting buildup, and that's what that white flaky substance is. So those are the pros and the cons to proteins for healthy hair. Now let's talk about what happens if that you use protein on unhealthy hair. So again, let's pretend that we're going to look at a strand of hair. Now while healthy hair, as we shared before, I showed you the demonstration of that, unhealthy hair looks a little bit more like this. You'll have hair that's growing, and then you'll have nicks in it. Each of these areas, instead of the healthy hair, which looked like this, essentially, that was kind of your healthy strand, and unhealthy hair, each of these nicks right here, is a source of damage and weakness. And it's a place where your hair is more likely to break. So for you, what proteins do is fill in those various nicks. And that's a great thing. The pros of proteins for unhealthy hair is that by filling in the nicks, it makes the hair stronger, and it also gives you shine. And tame, like we talked about earlier. The cons the primary one is that this is a temporary fix. As soon as you wash your hair and wash that protein treatment off, your hair is again still nicked, damaged, and those points are weak and prone to breakage. So, similar, think of it like a hole in the wall. You can certainly patch over a hole in the wall, but the fact is the hole is still there and that area is still pretty weak. The same is the case with damaged hair and protein treatments. So, again, there's benefit in that the hair is stronger because similar to, again, that patched hole, by plastering over it, in this case, proteining over it, you're giving it some additional strength by filling in those holes. Again, proteins give you shine. They do add weight to the hair because of their size, which means they give you tame and your hair will be less frizzy. But again, all of those things are temporary. And even here, if that you are not using a good 
um, cleansing shampoo or whatnot, because proteins are heavy, you too can get build up and your hair can get weighed down by overuse of proteins. So when you use a protein treatment, you need to think about why are you using it, how often are you using it, and just that. Are you using it because you're thinking it's making your hair healthy? Because fact is, it's just a temporary fix to a problem that needs to be solved by better care, better maintenance, gentler handling, better products, um, better technique, and just in general, and I say it all the time, the best thing you can do for your hair is get some knowledge. Understand the products that you're using, the techniques that you're using, why they work, why they don't work, and then from there you can make an informed decision as to whether or not a product is worthwhile. To be perfectly honest with you, I've been natural for going on almost two years now and I've not done a protein treatment more than once. I don't feel the need to. My hair doesn't have nicks or damage in it and so it's not necessary. And when I've used styling products that are heavy on protein, I've not liked them at all. They seem to leave my hair with a lot of caked up flaky whiteness and that's because again they're just sitting on top of my hair. My hair doesn't have a place for them to plug into so they're just sitting there and flaking up and essentially they're just building up and weighing my hair down. So hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it also answers the question as to what I do for a living and if you guys have any questions, any feedback, any comments, certainly hit me up. Talk to you guys later. Bye.